Hey, I'm Zach. Thanks so much for checking out this week's message. I hope that it encourages you. I hope it challenges you. And I hope that it causes you to dive deeper into God's Word. I also hope that you have some community around you that you can talk through some of these things with. And if you don't, we'd love to invite you to be a part of our community here at Restore, whether that's coming to one of our Sunday gatherings or coming to one of our Restore groups. Either way, we would love to see you. You can get more information about that on our website at RestoreAustin.org. And I hope you enjoyed this week's video. All right. Who can tell me what this is? Is it a goldfish? No. It's a whale. It's a whale, I think. Is that right? Well, we're going to put it right here. You know, um, if you've been here the last few weeks, you know that uh, we've been in this series called, uh, on Jonah, on the book of Jonah. We've been walking through the book. Well, today we're going to tell the whole story of Jonah. As Sonia tries to figure out what to do with the whale. We're gonna... I'm making him swim for a while. Oh, that's good. You good? Yeah. Is your mic good? No. Are we on? Let's turn, let's turn Sonia's mic on. That's just not even nice. Just to only have mic on and not Sonia's mic on. Well, today we're going to be telling the whole story of Jonah, kind of all together, and we're going to need your help. So kids and adults, we're going to be giving you instructions throughout. This is going to be interactive and awesome, and we're going to need your help as we walk through the story of Jonah in this kind of interactive and family-friendly way. So once there was this man named Jonah, and God gave Jonah this special job. Jonah was called a prophet. And a prophet was someone who God gave a message to, and then they were supposed to give that message to someone else. They were like a messenger for God. And Jonah lived back in this place called Israel, and he and his people were called Israelites. Now, for a long time, all the messages that God sent to Jonah were for the Israelites. And so he would get them, and he would go to his family, the Israelites, and tell them all the messages. It was a pretty easy job. And everything that he told the Israelites from God actually came true. And so Jonah became this really beloved member of the Israelite family. Everybody loved him. Everybody respected him. It's easy to talk to your family, right? It's easy to have conversations with people that you loved. And Jonah was just telling his people that God loved them, that he cared for them, that he wanted to be with them. And all the Israelites listened to Jonah. And Jonah loved his home in Israel, and he loved his family, the Israelites. Aw, isn't that so nice? Do you guys love your family? Yes, if you love your family, I want you to give yourself a hug. Ooh, ooh, hug, 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 hug. No strangling, hug, hug. Well, Jonah loved his family, and he loved giving them messages from God. But one day, God sent a message to Jonah that was for some other people. God sent a message to Jonah that was for the people who lived in Nineveh. Now, the Ninevites were not very nice people. They were really mean to each other. Do you know, they didn't listen to God. They didn't care about God or what God said. In fact, they did not even know about God. Let's watch and see what some of the Ninevites were doing. Oh my goodness. Did you see the kid rip the head off that doll? Yeah, I saw the baseball bat too. It was inappropriate. Wow. Really. Yeah. Kids don't do that. We don't do that to our brothers and sisters, right? No. But the people of Nineveh were doing lots of bad things to each other. Now, Nineveh was where all of Israel's enemies lived. The people of Nineveh were enemies of Jonah and his family. Jonah and his family and the Israelites, they didn't like the Ninevites at all. Actually, you know what? They hated them. 
Jonah and his family, they didn't care if anything bad happened to the Ninevites. In fact, they probably hoped that something bad would happen to them. Whoa. Yeah, sometimes we don't like people. Sometimes people who are mean to us make us so mad that we wish that something bad would happen to them. Has that ever happened to you, Sonia? It's never happened to me. I didn't know maybe it would happen to you. Yes, it has happened to me. Kids, do you know that when I was growing up in middle school, there were some kids that would make fun of me, and it made me really sad, and it hurt my feelings, and I would get so mad that I would sit, and I would think, I would, like, wish that something bad would happen to them. Like, maybe they would spill chocolate milk all over their shirt in lunch. (laughs) Or maybe when they were in gym class, their pants would rip right down the middle and everybody would laugh at them. I thought that would be great. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. I know. That uh, that pants ripping sound brought back some bad memories for me, actually, just then. Yeah. But I'm sure that we've all felt like that about someone. Mm -hmm. So, guys, kids, if you have ever not liked somebody and if you've not wanted to help them, or even if you didn't like them so much that you wish something bad would happen to them, I want you to stand up and stomp. Can you stomp? All right, stand, stand up, up and stomp. Stomp. If Come you've on. ever been like that, if you've Come ever on. felt like if that. If you've ever felt that way, if you've ever felt that way about anybody, oh, good. And stop. Wow. Well, it looks like a lot of us have felt like Jonah at some point. But wait, in in the story, we know that God had a message for the Ninevites, right? And Mm -hmm. you see, God still loved them, even though they were making bad choices. God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell them to stop doing the bad things because God wanted the Ninevites to know just how much he cared for them and how much he loved him. But Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't care about them, and he might have even been afraid to go and tell them. Like you said, they were his enemies, Mm -hmm. and that can be really hard, but... He was thinking to himself, what if he went there and they didn't listen to me? Or what, what, if, I, what if I went there and they, they hurt me or they got mad at me? And so Jonah didn't even think they deserved to hear about God anyway. So instead of going, Jonah decided to turn around and run. Let's see what he does. Let's see. Oh, Jonah decided to go to run away from Nineveh. He decided to get on a boat and go the opposite way. You know, Jonah said, ha, this is a great plan because now God won't be able to find me and I won't have to go to Nineveh. So he quickly got on the boat and because it is tiring running away from God, he fell asleep. It was not long before a strong wind started to blow. Whoosh, whoosh, and the boat started rocking back and forth. Can you rock back and forth in your seats? God was sending a big storm. The wind blew. All right, all kids, I want you to be the wind with me. Ready? Whoosh. And the rain started coming down. Okay, and adults, we're going to be the rain, okay? So, bring the rain down. And stop. That was a big storm. Let's watch and see what happens. Wow. Hmm. 
Jonah knew that God had sent the storm to get his attention. So he went after he was woken up and went to the sailors and said, you need to throw me overboard. That's the only way that you're going to be saved. And the sailors thought, we don't want to do that. We don't want to hurt this guy, Jonah. And so they actually paddled as fast as they could to try to get out of the storm. But pretty soon they knew they weren't going to make it out. So they listened to Jonah. They finally realized he was right. And the minute that they threw Jonah overboard, the storm completely stopped. Check it out. Poor Jonah. Oh, that was a cute little fish. He looked like a cute fish, but yeah. then he got a little crazy there at the yeah. end. Like you all know, little children. Jonah, that's probably exactly right. <laughs> Jonah thought that he was going to drown, but God saved Jonah by sending this fish to come and swallow him whole. And even though Jonah was running from God, even though he wasn't listening to God, even though he turned his back on God, God still loved Jonah so much. So much so that God saved Jonah, and he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Whoa, guys, can you imagine being inside the belly of a fish? Do you think it would smell like roses or like garbage? Yes, it probably stunk, and it was gross, and there was probably seaweed and lots of disgusting things. It's, Jonah was probably trying to hold his nose and go like this. He said, pee! Can you guys say that with me? Ready? P-U. Ugh. Well, Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, and that gave him a lot of time to think. You know, pretty soon he realized that his plan to run away from God was a horrible plan. So Jonah decided to ask God to save him. Jonah said that he was sorry for not obeying God and for running away. Jonah asked God to forgive him. And do you know what? (laughs) God heard Jonah's prayer and forgave him. Then God did something amazing. Let's watch and see what he did. God made the fish spit up Jonah on dry land. (laughs) More like throw up Jonah on dry land. Yeah, the fish upchucked Jonah on the land. (laughs) Yes, and then God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Now, what do you think? Do you think Jonah listened? Yes, he did listen. Jonah obeyed. Jonah told the people God's message, and this was the message that he said. He said, God loves you with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. Even if you have run far away from God, God has never stopped loving you. If you will stop running away from God, he will forgive you, he told the people, just like God forgave me. And you know what? An amazing thing happened. The Ninevites chose to listen and follow God. They learned to start loving God and listening to him rather than running away from him just like Jonah had. And many years later, God was going to send another messenger into the world to tell people that very same message of God's love. And this messenger would be God's own son, Jesus Christ. 
And God would send Jesus to tell us that God loves us. And that no matter how many times we've run away, no matter how many times we've turned our back, no matter how many times we've been like Jonah or the Ninevites or anything like that, no matter how many times we did that, he still loves us. And he loves us so much that he sent Jesus here to earth. In fact, Jesus not only came to earth, he left the perfection of heaven to come to the brokenness of earth. He lived a perfect life, the one that we could never live, and then he died in our place. He took our sin and death and died on the cross for us. Then he spent three days and three nights in the grave, and then he rose, overcoming sin and death to offer life to Sonia and to me and to all of you. In fact, think about it. Jonah spent three days in the whale and then came out to save a city. Jesus spent three days in the grave and then came out to save the whole world. And we're about to go and celebrate these people who have said yes to Jesus and have placed their faith in him and who have trusted him to save them through baptism. And it's going to be so, so much fun. I cannot wait to do it. Because when we get baptized, we declare to the whole world that God loves us so much that we want to stop running from him. We want to turn to him and have him love us with that never-ending kind of love, the love that he's always had, and we just turn to receive it. Are you ready to see that? Ready to watch some people Yay. get baptized and eat some barbecue? Yes. yes. All right, awesome. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to go out and do that. I'll give you some instructions, okay? So let me pray. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for just the beauty of having a room full of all generations. God, you were the one that said when you were here on earth as Jesus, let the little children come to me. God, and that you were the ones that laid your hands on them and blessed them. And so as we gather together all generations this morning and talk about the beautiful story of Jonah that represents the even more beautiful story of your son, Jesus, I pray that it would impact our hearts, that it would impact our lives and would walk out of here a little bit different because we encountered your love and your grace and your hope in amazing ways. I pray for all of those getting baptized that, God, this would just be a life-changing moment for them and that as we go out and we hang out and eat barbecue and connect together, there will be a beautiful time of fun and fellowship as a family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.